So in today's class, uh, you'll learn about these different topics here on the screen. Uh, so which resolution and file type to use. And we'll talk about the actual how to digitize or how to scan. Basic editing tips, like some photo restoration and repair techniques. It's not going to be a, oh, a, like a 500 level class today. Uh, we'll talk about stitching and, cr and creating a panorama. We'll talk about adding pictures to your legacy family file. We'll even talk about the flip pal. We'll talk about legacy charting. And uh, if, if you've attended some of my classes before, uh, I'm gonna, my style, I guess, I've got a, a mixture of prepared slides and I'll, I'll also use the unscripted style. Um, so let's just see where we are led today. Today's class will not cover how to organize your digital images, how to share them or how to back them up. Uh, they were thoroughly covered in, uh, our, or in our webinar earlier this year. So you can go back and review that on CD if you'd like to. So let's just start out with the very basics. When I'm referring to the term digital image, basically I'm just talking about a, a picture from your digital camera. This could be a file that you created from your scanner. Uh, your flip pal or other scanning device. Now this is not just um, photographs, anything, a piece of paper, a will, an obituary that you place on your scanner um, and you digitize it, it, it now becomes a digital file. A digital image could also be a digital file that you downloaded uh, somewhere from the internet. A digital image is made up of lots of pixels. So I've got a, a zoomed in view here of one of my ancestors' noses. You can see here it's, uh, the digital image is made up of lots of little tiny pixels. Each one has a different color. And when you put all of these uh, pixels together, you have a digital image. Now about 12 years ago, I was asked to be the wedding photographer at my brother's uh, wedding. This is back in Washington, D.C. Uh, he asked me, I, because I was the cheapest, I guess, but I also had a digital camera. Not very many people had digital cameras back there. And what this meant was that I could take, I believe it was 114 pictures, and I didn't have to take them into the film processor. You know, we, uh, we used to take in rolls of 24 or 36 and you'd pay a certain amount for those pictures. 114 pictures I could take. Well, I could actually, I could take that many because on my camera I set it to the lowest resolution. Oh boy, I wish I would have known then what I know now. If you, if you look at this picture you could see lots of little tiny boxes or squares. Uh, well, these are the pixels. The problem came when I, when I uh, was going to blow this up. You know, so they can put it in, a, you know, an eight by ten frame or even larger to hang on their wall. Uh, because I, I didn't know about resolution then, uh, I, I messed up. Um, good thing other people did take some pictures, so it it wasn't a total loss. But uh, we'll talk about some of the the rules. This was a picture I took right after my. I I think he was five years old at the time, five or six, right after. Uh, my son scored his first goal ever in soccer or, uh, or, or football, I guess some of you uh, call this. And I was happy to, to grab it, to have snapped this picture, but unfortunately I got this, this muscle man guy there in the background that will live forever in the picture. And so I'm going to show you some techniques uh, where you can remove unwanted parts of the picture um, and clean them up. Some of you have seen this picture, uh, well known. It's part of our legacy sample file. And I started out with uh, an image or, or the actual original picture that look that when I scanned it originally, it looks just like this. And the image is actually you can barely um, see that there's anything on it if you're looking at the original. But I'll just give you some quick pointers on how to 
uh, clean it up just a bit, uh, make it a little bit brighter, fix some things like this tear that you see there. So we'll talk about uh, some basic techniques for this. So before you digitize, before you start uh, on your project of scanning your documents or uh, whatever pictures you might have, you need to ask yourself uh, these, this question, what are you ultimately going to do with the image once it's been dig digitized? Are you going to use this in a presentation like I'm doing today? Do you want to publish it in a book? Do you just want to email it to your family? Well, the answer to, to this question here will determine how you should digitize the document or the image. Excuse me, and then I wrote uh, sort of. So, because you will never know all the future uses of your digital images, these two concepts are really important, resolution and file format. We've got to talk about all this boring stuff here at the beginning, uh, but this is the, the really important uh, information. First, resolution. Now, when, uh, when you initiate your scanner software, or w when I start mine, I get a, a screen that looks like this. Okay, so I can tell it what type of a document I have, a photograph, a black and white document, uh, or others. Based on this setting right here, and based on my destination, it's going to set my resolution to either something low or something high, uh, somewhere in between. So here, uh, because I've got the screen slash web set as the destination, it's uh, automatically changed my resolution or my dots per inch down to 96. So uh, what, I've, what I've written here on the screen, if you're just going to be viewing your digital images on the screen, this resolution right here determines the size of the image on your screen. And the, so the higher the resolution, meaning the higher the dots per inch you select, the larger that the digital image will appear on your screen. Have any of you ever received an email from your grandson where you're only able to view the left nostril? Well, that's, a, uh, that's because that resolution, it may have been scanned or digitized at a high resolution. Okay. For images that you that you scan and then you print, the resolution to a certain extent determines the quality of the image, not its size. Okay, so these two concepts uh, you might want to go back and uh, review or go and study the handouts. Uh, so if if I were to go and select printer, now notice I'm in home mode. I could also change to professional mode where I've got even more flexibility. Uh, but when I'm on printer, it goes and it sets the default to 300 dots per inch. Or if I choose other, then I've got all kinds of other options. So the higher the resolution that you select here, the more dots will make up the printed image, giving it the higher quality look. So there's actually quite a bit uh, to understand about video resolution versus printed resolution. Video resolution meaning what you see on your computer screen, and printing resolution meaning how it will look when it uh, prints out of your printer. My favorite website to try to understand and comprehend all of this is up at scantips.com. They've got a nice comparison chart. I've also included it. Uh, on the, hand, on the handouts. There's actually 11 pages of handouts, but again, they're available just on the webinar CD. Okay, so we've talked just a little bit about resolution. What about the file format? I think genealogists love, and they've heard all about JPEG. I need to make sure that everything is saved as a JPEG, and we hear that. Uh, so after you scan your image, or your newspaper, or whatever you're digitizing, the next step will be to actually save that image to your hard drive. Yeah, you know, Diane, Diane is writing in, I would never advise someone to scan at 96 dots per inch. And she says, you severely limit the future use of this image, and you may never have another chance to scan that photo. Okay, so Diane's really caught on to this. Uh, I'll show you what the golden rules of this are in just a minute. So right after you digitize it, you're going to need to save the image to your hard drive. And that's what this uh, dialog is right here. 
So this is the point where you give it a name, you decide where you're going to store it on, on your hard drive, and then you'll pick what kind of file type or what kind of format you're going to save this as. So popular fi uh, file formats include the JPEG, TIFF, PNG, and, and uh, the GIF or GIF. Yeah, we hear a lot about JPEGs because the file size of those images are much smaller. However, JPEG uses what's called a lossy compression method to accomplish this, uh, which kind of, you know, in human terms or down-to-earth terms, means it kind of it squishes the image quite a bit. Uh, but at the same time, it's it's you're losing a little bit of what makes up that image. You know, and most digital cameras use the JPEG format as well. TIFF uses what's called uh, well, it's lossless. In other words, it does not compress. Uh, it's versatile, considered the highest quality format. Um, then I've got little information down here at the bottom. Go back up to scan tips to learn a lot more about image file formats. So here's our here's our golden rules. Because just like uh, Diane wrote in saying, because you'll never know what you're in the future, what you're going to do with your digital image, you need to save your original scan uh, or your original digital image at a higher resolution. Now, the experts are, are suggesting that this is between you know, 300 and 600 dots per inch. Some experts uh, write 300 dots per inch is, is more than you'll probably ever need. But we also want to think about the future. Um, in the future, won't our technology improve uh, such that we may be able to utilize you know, the, the higher resolution? So that's the resolution golden rule. The golden rule for your file formats is, it's kind of a two-part rule here. Save your original as an archival type file format, meaning something like TIFF, or be very careful to only make changes of that original uh, to a copy of the original. So we're going to uh, talk a lot about this stuff. Don't let this happen to you. The five stages of, now, actually, before I I get into this. I want to thank Ken McGinnis and Luke Camo. They're in the in the background today, uh, trying to go through uh, your your questions, because we do have a thousand of you here today. Uh, we'll do our best to get to your questions, but we're not going to get to all of them. It's just uh, reality. So uh, they're answering some of your questions, and some of them they're assigning uh, to me. Okay. So the five stages of digital images grief. Now, the reason I bring this up is I was at a, a conference in St. George, Utah. This was a few years ago. And uh, I had a gentleman come up to me, and he, he, he told me he had just completed two years' worth of scanning all of his family's pictures. And he was happy. It was a relief. It was a big project. And then he had a question for me, though. He said, when I tried to, to uh, insert these digital images into the book that he was working on, Every single picture, no matter what he did, it appeared really pixelated, meaning when he when he inserted it into Word or whatever software he was using, it was really, really small, and so he tried to you know in resize it a bit and uh so doing uh, they were all pixelated and I asked him a little bit more about this and and uh, he said to me that when he was scanning these images, he chose to change the percentage from 100% down to 25%, meaning he's re actually reducing the size of these of, of the images. And he saved everything as a JPEG. And then he did some editing to the originals to make them look a little bit better. And uh, so what started, to, what started to happen when I, when I answered his question was he got into these, uh, the five stages of grief. Uh, he didn't want to believe me, and so uh, sitting across the uh, the aisle from me at this conference was Dick Eastman, and some of you know him. So I said, why don't you go talk to Dick and see what he has to say, and well, this gentleman got the same response, and uh, boy, he went home. I could tell he was a little angry. Uh, he came back the next day, you know, going on to step three here, and, and was depressed, and you know, by the end of the day, he was accepting that uh, he had some problems. And so 
before you start out on a massive uh, digitization project,